It was hijacked. You're going to find out what the Jewish patriarchs knew about the mystery of the power of imparting the Jewish blessing. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Did you know we would not have Christmas without Hanukkah? You, you may have never thought about that. There could be no Christmas without Hanukkah. Why? Because Christmas celebrates the birth of the Messiah. There'd be no Messiah without Hanukkah. Why? Because there was a real mean tyrant. He was a Syrian king. His name was Antiochus Epiphanes, and he decided that he did not want Jewish people who were different than what his kingdom was. He wanted them to stop being Jewish. And if the Jews had assimilated, then there would have been no seed of the Jew, because in Genesis 12, 3, we're told that in the seed of Abraham, all the Gentiles, all the nations of the world would be blessed. So this Antiochus Epiphanes, and by the way, Epiphanes was his title. It means God manifest. You see, it, it's like a mirror image of what the Messiah was going to do in reverse, sort of like a, a type of an antichrist. He, he thought he was God and he would go into the temple. I mean, there, there, this opens up such a vista of understanding when you understand your Jewish roots. And then Isaiah 7:14 says, we're going to have a miracle sign. A virgin shall conceive and have a child. This child's name will be Emmanuel. Do you know what Emmanuel means? God with us. You see, the other was a counterfeit. You can't have a counterfeit unless there's an authentic. So that's why I say there could be no Christmas without Hanukkah. Uh, so many things have been stolen from us, like our Jewish roots. And I have a friend by the name of Pastor Bill Lincoln that God has worked for many years in him to understand something that has been hijacked from the church, something that has caused Jewish people to be blessed over centuries that Christians were meant to be in the olive tree and have this rich blessing, but it was hijacked. And it all started many years ago when this fine Baptist preacher got filled with the Spirit of God, spoke in supernatural languages, and realized he had to leave his church. And as a matter of fact, Bill, you told me before we went on the air that when you left, that God instructed you to bless those that were critical of you, but there was another pastor in the same circumstance in another church, and he did the opposite. What happened? Well, that message that God gave me, Sid, gave life to me. It uh, prevented me from coming under the power of the curse. Of tell, me ex speaking. tell me exactly what he told you. Well, uh, he called me because he was going through the same thing in his church and asked me to come to see him after, uh, after dark so that no one would see me coming in. <laughs> and uh, so I went to his home, went in the back door like he asked, and when I walked into his den, he was a friend of mine, he was going through the same thing and he was internalizing the curses that people were speaking over him. And no matter what I told him, I said, uh, let, me, let me show you what God's been teaching me about how to break the curse, how to bless those who curse you and how to break the curse. But he wouldn't listen. He just said, but you don't know what they're doing to me. You don't know what they're saying to me. Sid, that terminated his ministry. He had been in ministry for 40, over 40 years. Oh. It terminated his ministry. He went into secular work, and in two years, he was dead. 
uh, and I, his wife asked me to do his funeral. I said, uh, what happened? She said, we had all kinds of tests, a battery of tests. We, they couldn't find anything wrong. I think he, I think he died of a broken heart. And so the, the blessing, Sid, is what God uses to relieve people, to release them from verbal curses that are spoken over their lives. Some of them labor under that all their lives from childhood. Now, what, what I'm curious is, what did God tell you? I mean, I, this is something you just don't naturally know to bless your enemies. Yeah, it's in the Bible, but you know, our brain is programmed the opposite. <clears throat> what did God tell you? When, when the criticism began uh, in the church over me, having received the fullness of the Holy Spirit and operating in the gifts, I went away and prayed for two days. And God spoke to me and told me to come back and begin to bless those who were cursing me. He said, if you'll do that, I can open doors for you that no man can close, and I'll put a hedge of protection around you. That's exactly what has happened. Hmm. And so here I am 38 years later, and God is still blessing me. Well, uh, God spoke to Pastor Bill when he started his new church because the Baptist church wasn't open to speaking in supernatural languages and, and the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, to build his church on the ironic blessing. At that time, what did that mean to you? Well, I didn't understand it fully. I began to look in the scriptures and then I thought, who can help me? And I remembered a friend of mine that I had befriended years earlier when I was the president of the Ministerial Association in another town. I was pastoring a Baptist church, a Jewish rabbi. And I called him up. He was in retirement. He was older than I, in retirement in the other part of the state. And I said, Rabbi, uh, this is Bill Ligon. He began to weep. He said, where are you? I, I've never had a friend like you. I said, well, I'm on the other side of the state and I want to come and sit at your feet and study. He said, my home is open to you. So I drove to his home, stayed in his home. He blessed me when I arrived. I uh, just quizzed him about everything in the Old Testament, what the patriarchs knew. And after I studied with him, then I came back and researched in six seminaries and began to teach and write materials on blessing, and I began to build a church around the principles of imparting blessing uh, to those uh, around you. And most people don't realize this, but the early church was founded on the Aaronic blessing, and Bill Ligon has studied it, has been the pioneer in bringing it back to the church. But it even made a major difference in his marriage. He started blessing his wife. His wife started blessing him, and there was an emotional detachment that was healed as a result of these blessings. Explain that. Well, you know, men in general do not develop an emotional bonding with their spouses. It's, it's more challenging. The average man thinks that physical intimacy equals emotional intimacy, but it doesn't. And uh, so several years... Now, the, worm, the woman knows the difference. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and that's what they're starving for, is emotional intimacy. So after we began to bless our children on a daily basis, one day it dawned on us that we needed to bless each other. So ever since, my wife and I have knelt in front of each other every day. Today, I'm out of town. So today, I've called her on the phone. I've blessed her verbally. She's blessed me. And so as, she, as the months went by, as she laid hands on me every day and blessed me, I noticed... Sid, that the emotional intimacy was developing. That little wall that was there between her and me, that was in me, uh, that you're not going to get that close to me. No woman's going to control my life, you know, uh, just melted down. And now we're, we're close and we respect each other more. I didn't lose my place in the home as a spiritual leader, and she didn't lose her place as the queen of the home. The fact is, it enhanced <laughs> everything we did. So she became really Jewish, because we Jewish people say that the woman is the queen. Well, she <laughs> is now. She really is. Well, but, you know, I, I, I have a question, though, for Bill Lincoln. I watched him come into the studio. I watched such strength inside of him, and I'm going to tell you a secret. He's 80 years young. What do you attribute to the vitality you have at 80? I believe that, that my wife laying hands on me and my sons laying hands on me every day and speaking blessing, and now my grandchildren laying hands on me regularly is a big part of giving me strength and vitality in my life and, and walking in the Lord, walking in the presence of the Lord. So it's time for you 
to get that ancient Jewish blessing operating in your life. We'll talk more about it. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Did you know that there are ancient spoken Hebrew blessings in the Bible that will release miracles, healing, and prosperity into your life? Call now and get Pastor Bill Ligon's life-changing four-part audio CD teaching series and book, Imparting the Blessing. Both are yours for a donation of $38. Shipping and handling is included. Please ask for offer number 9120. In this easy to use course, you will learn the biblical methods used by the Jewish patriarchs to impart God's blessings to their family. Understand why it is so important for you to impart the blessings over your children and your grandchildren. Receive an impartation to break curses over yourself and your family. Learn how to impart the blessing to unbelievers and watch them come to Messiah. Pastors will learn how to integrate the impartation of the blessing into their church services and home groups. Through the impartation of the blessing, marriages are healed, the sick are made whole, businesses began to prosper, children do better in school, and so much more. God will open up your understanding and it will literally transform your life. Don't miss out on getting Pastor Bill Ligon's life-changing four-part audio CD teaching series and book, Imparting the Blessing. Both are yours for a donation of $38. Shipping and handling is included. Please ask for offer number 9120. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9120 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Pastor Bill Lincoln. Did you ever wonder how a group of slaves, the Jewish people from Egypt, a million plus, went out into the desert and how they were so blessed? There's a reason for it, and my guest is going to explain that to you. Pastor Bill, why? God gave Moses the greatest challenge that any man's ever had in pastoring people. He had several million people counting the children and the wives, and uh, they had a slavery mentality, no self-esteem, no self-worth. He gave them three pillars of faith to change their lives into a great viable nation, to respect themselves and honor themselves. See, those same three pillars of faith can be used to transform a person with no self-esteem and no self-worth. The first was the blood covenant. We call it Passover. The second was the moral code. We call it the Ten Commandments. God gave them to them on Mount Sinai. But the one that releases the favor of God upon the people was what we call the high priestly, priestly blessing or the Aaronic blessing. God gave it to Moses and he commanded him to have Aaron and his sons speak that blessing over his people every time they gathered together. Now, that blessing then in number 627 uh, is used, and God says that uh, He Himself would be present when the blessing is spoken, and that His name would be placed upon the people, and that He would do the blessing. So you know what? I feel like our people need a blessing right now. Do you feel like you need a blessing? Would you pray for them right now yes. so they'll understand? And, and, and this is found in Scripture in Numbers chapter 6. Verses 23 through 27. Would you pray that now? Yes, I certainly will. And, and I encourage you right now, when you receive this blessing, to can remember that it is not I who releases the blessing, it's God. Because God said, Thus you shall place my name on the sons of Israel, and I then will bless them. So you receive this now from the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who's commanded the blessing to be spoken over your people that your name might be placed on them and that you might bless them. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift the light of His countenance on you and give you His peace. Now the promise of the Lord is that His name has been placed upon you and the Lord Himself will bless you. So by faith, expect things to begin to happen in your life. And God bless you. It is so supernatural as you understand the revelation that's been hijacked from the church of the, this ancient blessing. Uh, let me tell you how supernatural it is. Tell me about that experience of the woman that had like a birthmark that was a V on her head. My goodness, her husband brought her across the state to, to us in Brunswick uh, where we live and she had a birthmark, a V in her, her forehead 
and it had been there since she was a little girl. Her mother cursed her and said, I didn't want you. I wish you had never been born. And it began to surface, and they considered it a birthmark, but they also said that it was a sign that she was cursed, and they even gave her a name that began with a V. Hmm. We began to teach her to bless those who cursed her, and as she did, uh, and she started verbalizing those blessings over her mother and the other people who had spoken curses over her, Sid, the, the V began to fade. By the time she left, the V was gone, and her husband told me later over the telephone, he said, Pastor, she continues every day to bless those who curse her. When she does, it stays away. When she begins to, to take in an offense and, and, uh, and, and groan over an offense in her life, it begins to fade back in. But then I remind her, you have to bless those who curse you, and when she does, it goes away. So she eventually learned to live with that birthmark in her forehead gone. Now, but you actually saw it disappear before your I eyes? I saw it. It didn't happen immediately, but as she, we worked with her for two or three hours, and as she, we helped her learn how to bless those, we identified those who had offended her and had her begin to bless those, then pray for them, according to Luke 6, uh, 27, uh, she uh, began to experience the fading of that, and, and before she left, it was gone. I couldn't see it anymore. Now, she saw it on the outside. Do you realize that's what's going on inside of you? Cancers, uh, tuberculosis, uh, uh, heart problems, they all get healed as you understand the ancient blessing. I don't know anyone that teaches it better than Pastor Bill Lincoln. What about that seventh grader that failed the seventh grade for the second time? Well, he, when he brought his report card in the second year in the seventh grade, his mother called me distraught. She said, I don't know what to do, Pastor. She said, we have tried everything. We have rewarded him. We have punished him. We've taken him to the school counselor, to the principal, but nothing is working. Mm -hmm. I said, you and your husband bring him to me. I met a bright boy who was totally defeated. His teachers were now cursing him. They were saying, you'll never make anything out of yourself. You're a failure. His parents were verbally cursing him, thinking they were doing him good. They said, uh, if you don't change, you'll never make anything out of yourself. I told his parents, first of all, to pray and ask God to show them what he planned that boy for that boy to be. And then I had them begin to lay hands on him and bless him with those blessings every day. I taught him how to bless his teachers. And when he learned it well, I sent him to school. And Sid, he approached each teacher each hour, and he said, Teacher, may I speak to you a moment? I'm sorry for the way I've acted, but you're an excellent teacher, and may God raise you up to be the star teacher in this school. Uh, one teacher chose Now, that him. must have really taken them aback to have and someone one, like that compliment you. Yes, one teacher chose to, chose to curse him again. She huh. said, I don't believe a thing you say. You're a liar. You'll never make anything out of yourself. And I had him ready. He waited until she was through. He didn't get upset. He said, I understand how you feel, but you're an excellent teacher, and may God raise you up to be the star teacher in this school. She finally said, well, if you feel that way, maybe we can try again. And that boy that day broke the curses of the teachers mm -hmm. over his life. He's, he forgave his parents. His parents began to bless him. He finished that year with all A's and B's, was invited to enroll in a pilot training program, and eventually became a jet pilot and started flying cargo jets around the world. It is so supernatural when you understand the the, the worth and the value of the blessing. It'll help you in your job. Maybe we'll have time to talk about some amazing things that happen to people. As a matter of fact, even barren women that are married have children. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. For he himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself, to create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Adin novi chalavyak. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. We now return to it's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Pastor Bill Lincoln. And what happens when you go all over the country and you pray for barren women that are married and miracles happen? Some 200 
uh, spiritual grandchildren, you might say, Pastor Bill Lincoln, around the country, but your own family. Uh, your son, William, is married to Kim, and they are barren. They can't have children. What happened with them? Well, we, we studied the principles of blessing uh, on barren women in Genesis chapter 1, where God spoke to Adam and Eve and said, be fruitful and multiply. And a, a Hebrew scholar uh, has written that that's when the womb opened and they began to have children. So my wife started laying hands. She laid hands on our daughter-in-law. She began to have children. She laid hands on others also. Uh, we had one lady, 40 years of age, who came to my wife. She and her husband had been married for nearly 20 years and had never been able to conceive. The doctors had tried all procedures they could on her and she finally said, Doctor, I'm not going to spend any more money. I'm just going to put it in the hands of God. And I told her, I said, that's what you need to do. Find my wife. So she went to my wife. My wife laid hands on her womb. Uh, she and I spoke blessing. And God, she went home and God opened her womb. And in three days, she and her husband conceived a little boy. And he's now uh, in an in a, um, institution of, of higher learning in the state of Florida somewhere. As an, as an outstanding university student. God is using the blessing. We've had many, many people, some in our own church, who were barren and unable to have children, and they, uh, my wife and I would lay hands on them. My wife would lay hands on the, the, the <laughs> wife's womb. I would lay hands on the husband, and God would open their lives to conceiving children. And you know what I love? On Bill's 80th birthday, Many people, because they know his teaching, prayed a blessing over him. But included in those that prayed the blessing were the, William and Kim's children. How many grandchildren do you have? They now have five. Five. That, th what did that mean for them to be praying over you, your oh, grandchildren? They love it. They love it. Sid, if they were here right now with you and with me, and I said, children, Mr. Roth needs a blessing, they would be around you. Uh, like little ducks laying hands on you, releasing the ironic blessing upon your life. And by understanding the blessing, let me tell you what happened to his family. Uh, his, his, his son John works with him in the ministry and has written books uh, to minister to children. Uh, his, his son William is a state to, to senator. To a, a and I, I, I just want you to tell me the story again about when William went off to college. What did he say to well, you? He called me to his room and he knelt on in front of me and he said, Dad, bless me one more time before I leave. So I was able to lay hands on him and speak blessing and success over his college. A career. He wanted to go into law school, and he's done that a number, a number of times. Both of my sons have. They come and ask for the blessing on their lives. Now, very quickly, tell me about the person that needed bypass surgery. Well, her mother called me. She was a woman in her 30s living in an apartment alone and working, and uh, the doctor had said she needed to have uh, uh, stomach bypass surgery. Hmm. Uh, she wasn't able to lose weight. Uh, so I asked if she would bring her daughter to me, and so she did. I talked to her, and I asked her if she was willing to speak blessing over herself. She said yes, and I said, well, would you pray and ask God to show you what your weight should be? She did that, and then she began to stand in front of a mirror, lay hands on herself, and speak blessing over herself every day. And uh, several months went by, and uh, one day uh, she walked up in the lobby of the church and pulled on my coattail, I turned around and she said, Pastor, look at me. I looked at her and she said, I have not had surgery and I've lost 72 pounds. And then she put her hand behind her head like the girls do and did a little twirl around. And I stepped back. I knew she wanted me to look at her and I said, wow, you look great. She said, God did it when I began to speak blessing instead of cursing over myself because I had been cursing myself saying, you're fat. You'll never make anything out of yourself. You're ugly. You're fat. And I changed that and I began to speak blessing and life over myself every day. Sid, God turned that girl's life around. So many people, Pastor Bill, have not understood the blessing. So many of you have never, although you just, you just were on this show, have never really had your father bless you. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, perhaps your father's gone on to heaven and he can't bless you. but. 
I want to bless you in a new covenant way right now. I'm going to take that ancient blessing, but you see, because of the Messiah, it's past tense, and I'm going to bless you right now. The Lord has blessed you. Yes, he has. The Lord has kept you. Yes, he has. The Lord has smiled upon you, and he has gifted you, and he has surrounded you with his favor and given you his shalom. Shalom means completeness in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. And he has placed his name upon you. Do you know what that means? That every knee must bow, every tongue must confess to that name, and he has placed that name on you right now. And walk in the authority and the favor and God's smile on you. Hold that head up in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that there are ancient spoken Hebrew blessings in the Bible that will release miracles, healing, and prosperity into your life? Call now and get Pastor Bill Ligon's life-changing four-part audio CD teaching series and book, Imparting the Blessing. Both are yours for a donation of $38. Shipping and handling is included. Please ask for offer number 9120. In this easy-to-use course, you will learn the biblical methods used by the Jewish patriarchs to impart God's blessings to their family. Understand why it is so important for you to impart the blessings over your children and your grandchildren. Receive an impartation to break curses over yourself and your family. Learn how to impart the blessing to unbelievers and watch them come to Messiah. Pastors will learn how to integrate the impartation of the blessing into their church services and home groups. Through the impartation of the blessing, marriages are healed, the sick are made whole, businesses began to prosper, children do better in school, and so much more. God will open up your understanding, and it will literally transform your life. Don't miss out on getting Pastor Bill Ligon's life-changing four-part audio CD teaching series and book, Imparting the Blessing. Both are yours for a donation of $38. Shipping and handling is included. Please ask for offer number 9120. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9120 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. The ancient rabbis tell us that when the shofar is played, all the promises of the Jewish prophets are released. The molecular structure of the atmosphere is literally changed. I tell you, miracles will be released next on It's Supernatural.